grace, mercy, and peace. They are yours from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The sermon this morning is based on what we heard in Jonah chapter 3. Imagine that there was a disease that was afflicting everyone. In some ways, that's not totally out of the realm of possibility. But imagine that there was a disease that was afflicting everyone in the world without leaving anybody out. That everyone was getting sick. And even if people weren't immediately dying, this sickness was causing all kinds of problems. Trouble breathing. Problems with walking. Hard of hearing. All kinds of issues that this disease was causing until it finally took every last person person who got sick, whether they had to wait years and years or only a short while. Now imagine if you, of all people, had the cure for this disease, that the power to save others was in your hands that you had been given this beautiful gift, that you had been given the antidote and you yourself had received it, you were now protected from this disease. And it was given to you now to give it to others. Who would you give it to? Well, of course, you'd give it to your family, your spouse, your kids, mom and dad, grandkids, You'd give it to your friends. You'd give it to your church family, I hope. You'd want to see these people saved because you know them and you love them. But what about everyone else? The people who aren't so friendly to you and maybe just aren't unfriendly but really make your life miserable, maybe, and you wouldn't say this out loud, but maybe it would be better if somehow they just disappeared for your life if the disease would just take care of them for you. Do you really want to share this cure with them? Maybe you can see where I'm going with this. Sin is a disease that afflicts all people. It is a disease that causes all kinds of problems in our lives and our own sins. They also cause the problems in our lives and the sins of others cause problems for us. This disease of sin leads to death. Whether you live with it many, many years or just a short time. But we have received the cure. We have received the gospel of Jesus that he died on the cross to pay for all of our sins. That's the antidote. That's the guarantee. That even though we die here on earth, we will be raised to life in heaven forever. We have the power to cure in our hands and on our lips. So who are you going to share it with? In some ways, we can relate very well with Jonah. You probably know his story, but just in case you don't, here's a reminder. God called him to be a prophet, but not to the people of Israel, rather to an enemy nation, the Assyrians. The city of Nineveh was their capital, Now, the Assyrians, they were known for their cruelty, for their brutality. They were the world superpower of the time. They had the biggest army, the most technology. They were able to defeat anyone who stood in their path. 
and they didn't go about it nicely. When they defeated you, they made an example of you, burning down your towns, putting people to death, making sure people knew just how strong they were and how weak everyone else was. They were not nice people. So when God called Jonah to go and preach to the Ninevites, you can maybe understand why he didn't want to go. But it's more than just the fact that they are brutal and cruel that he doesn't want to go. They are not followers of the true God. They worship false gods. And they believe that their false gods are the ones who make them so strong that whenever they defeat another nation, it's because their gods beat the other god. And so it's not just they are cruel and brutal, but that they spit in the face of the true God. They spit in the face of Jonah's God. Again, you can see why Jonah didn't really want to go. And so he doesn't go. He goes in the opposite direction. He gets on a boat. He sails on that boat to the other side of the world, but on the way, God sends a storm that threatens to capsize the vessel he's on. The sailors manning the boat don't know what to do. Jonah finally is awakened, and he realizes what's going on, that this isn't some natural storm. This is God sent. He tells the sailors, throw me overboard, and y'all will be okay. So they do. And maybe Jonah thought he was getting out of this easy. I'll just die. But God sends a big fish to swallow Jonah. And for three days he spends in that fish until it vomits him out on the shore. And then we come to what we heard today. God calls him again. And this time, Jonah has learned his lesson, at least a little bit. And he goes to Nineveh and he preaches to them 40 days more and Nineveh will be overturned. Now maybe Jonah was a little surprised that the people of Nineveh, these cruel Assyrians, didn't come at him immediately with pitchforks or swords ready to make an example of another foolish foreigner who dared to stand up to the nation of Israel. No! No! Instead, they believe the word of God from his prophet. These people that you would never think would turn to God. Because why would they? They turn. They repent. It goes completely against what Jonah would have thought, probably also against what you would have thought. Here we see the power of the Word of God to change hearts. The message gets to the king, who perhaps even thought of himself as somewhat of a god, the leader of this nation. And yet he is also brought to his knees by God's powerful Word. He repents. He declares that the entire city and their animals should repent. And he says, who knows? Maybe God will relent and have compassion on us. And God does. He does. Through the message of the reluctant prophet Jonah, the people are saved. It's a miracle. Who are you the Jonah for? Who is that person in your life with whom you don't really get along, who maybe makes your life a little miserable, but who really needs to hear the good news about what Jesus has done for them? Who doesn't know? Who doesn't believe? We could talk all day about the loved ones in our lives who refuse to believe as much as we tell them, and that's always so hard. 
But there are also many in our lives who also need to believe with whom we are, like Jonah, reluctant to share the message. That person who, if they do not learn to know God and Jesus, will be condemned to hell. That person who needs to know that God has forgiven their sins for the sake of Jesus who died for them. Who is that person who mistreats you, who, who hates you? Perhaps that person whom you hate as well. The person, perhaps, who stands in, against Christianity and everything you stand for, everything you believe. We tend to think that those people can't be saved, that there's no turning them, that there's no hope for them, that it's a waste of time to even speak anything about God's word to them because they're not going to believe. And all it's going to bring me is a bunch of hate. It's even more than that, though. Sometimes we don't want to preach the word because in our heart of hearts, we don't really care or maybe even don't really want them to be saved that they have done so much against us or just done so much in general that they really don't deserve it. That it would be better off for all of us if they just ended up in hell. If the word of God can change the hearts of people like the Assyrians, they can change the hearts of those people as well. If the word of God can change the heart of one of the cruelest kings ever, it can change the heart that stands against Jesus today. This is the power that you have in your hands and on your lips. The power to heal the hardest soul. If God has put that person in your life to preach to them, it will not be a waste of time to do so because God is the one who gave you the mission. What about that other problem? The one that maybe lies a little deeper that would never really come out of our lips but enters our thoughts every so often. That desire that our enemies don't not be saved that they don't really deserve it. God invites you to see a greater miracle now. He invites you to see that we are not so different from the rest. That was the problem with Jonah too. He thought he was better than the Assyrians because he was part of God's people. He was a prophet. He followed God. He thought he was better than the Assyrians. That he did deserve God's mercy and grace while they did not. But his actions reveal that he's not so different from them. The Assyrians showed their cruelty with weapons. Jonah showed his cruelty by refusing to share God's word. Although the Assyrians worshipped other gods, Jonah also worshipped a god not his own, a false god, by refusing to listen to the God who called him. Not wanting that all people be saved is to not love God. Because this is what God wants. He tells us clearly in his word that he wants all people to be saved and to come to a knowledge of the truth. To not want all people to be saved is to not recognize that God did not save us because he looked through eternity and saw such a great person who deserved his love. As if he said, they are better, I will choose them. It's to not recognize that God didn't love us because of who we are, but because of who he is. And that's why he sent his son to die for us. 
That's why he sent his word through the mouths of messengers to us to bring us into his fold, to change our hearts from lost to saved. He invites us to see this great miracle without which we would be on the same path as those enemies. And so today, God invites you to reflect on that great miracle that he has done in your life. You think that no miracle has been done for you in your life? It has. Your heart has been changed from a heart of stone to a heart of flesh. He has carried you to repent again and again and again. And he keeps on calling you to repentance even though you keep doing turns like you're on a merry-go-round. He still sends his word to you each and every day to grant you the forgiveness that you need. And for Jesus' sake, his anger against your sin has gone. You will not perish. This is the miracle he's done for you. It's the miracle he's done for me. If he can do it for me, he can do it for them. Amen.